I'm Dr. Pete Mackey, uh, and the case study is child labour. This notion of child labour, most people know about it from uh, Children in Need, uh, Comic Relief, those sorts of programmes. So they see lots and lots of stuff on TV that tells us about how, how bad children's lives are, working children's lives are, in the developing world. Um, we've kind of just gone along with this assumption uh, for decades now. We've gone along with the assumption that children's work is necessarily a bad thing. We've done that because uh, we're coming at it from a, a very Western perspective. We've not really looked at the issue critically. Um, so what this research does is it challenges us to look at this problem slightly differently. Yeah, that's what geography is about. That's what geography at university is about. And we do that by um, firstly going into the developing world and asking people there about their views on children's work. Yeah, because they've got some very different views. Not only that, most of the work we've done has tended to ask adults about children's work. So adults in a protective way make certain claims about children's work. What this research does is say, let's talk to the children. Let's get their views. Let's ask them about their lives, their experiences. And only then, once we've got those views, will we have a really good balanced picture of what children's work is really like in a developing world. That may just make us question some of the international policies that we've got that say children's work is bad, they shouldn't be doing it, they should be in education and they should be playing. research draws on, on a mix of methods. Um, primarily it was a, a, a questionnaire with street working children. Um, so I spoke to 100 street working children and asked them a set of uh, questions including closed questions and open questions where they could just talk a, a little bit more openly. Um, but that was accompanied by some participatory work. So basically hanging around with kids um, for the best part of a year on the streets in Latin America. So hanging around observing their work, talking to them informally, um, observing some of the, the, the things that happen in their lives, good and bad, taken together, those things build up to give you a really good picture um, of what children's work is really like. So there are three areas which I sought to, to, to challenge and explore. One was this notion that children's work is exploitative. You know, the idea that children work for some big boss who's, who's forcing them into, into to labour. That's a common assumption. Um, of the hundred children I spoke with that were working on the streets, so selling um, all sorts of goods on the street, not one was working for, for some sort of um, exploitative boss. Um, the vast majority for, were working for their parents, some just for themselves. Um, but every single one of those children also had a, a home off the street. So they had somewhere to go back to. The vast majority of those, it was back to, to family. Others, it was back to, to siblings. Um, so basically, we started to contest this idea or to argue against the idea that these children were working for some horrible boss. It was normally a, a family environment. So that was the first finding, is it's not as exploitative as we thought. The next common assumption is that it's really hazardous. Yeah, that children face these awful, awful experiences. Um, normally we think of pictures in factories with children going under machines, um, etc. In the context of the work I was looking at, which was selling on the streets, yep, there, there were a lot of hazards. Um, so children had accidents, um, they were abused, and they, they faced theft of their, their goods, the things they were selling. But when we really looked into it, you know, what were the sorts of accidents? Why were they occurring? Actually, those accidents were occurring because those children were running away from the police. The police that were there tasked with getting those kids off the streets. So the police were the main cause of it, not the activity itself. Then in terms of thefts, who was stealing the children's goods? Most of it was confiscation by police. Again, those people that were tasked with getting the kids off the streets. Admittedly, there were some thefts. Uh, from other street working children. And then in terms of abuse, who were those children facing abuse from? Yep, there was some physical and verbal abuse from, from consumers uh, and other working children, but largely the police. Okay? Uh, the, the police that were there to remove those kids from the streets were, would, would be abusing them with batons, would be hitting um, uh, and trying to get them off the, the streets. 
So again, it, it makes us question, actually, some of those, those hazards that children face, yes, they're there, but they're not inherently a part of the work. If those police were doing a different job, if those police were tasked with protecting and not trying to remove, it would totally change their experience. It would become far less hazardous. Yeah. So a real, real question of that assumption about it being hazardous. Um, and the last point uh, is that it was um, detrimental. Yeah, that working in labour is detrimental. It's detrimental to education. It's detrimental to the time you have to play. It's detrimental to your life chances. That's the assumption. And there is data, there's research that tells us that's the case uh, in child labour. And in this study, yep, there were some children that weren't getting enough time to, to go to school. You know, there were cases where it was detrimental. But actually what we found is for the vast majority of children, they were combining work and education. It was the norm. That's what, that's what these children did. And the education system allowed for that because you only went to school in the morning or afternoon. So they were combining the two. They were combining work and play. And probably the most, um, the most significant finding is that uh, I think it was about 98% of the children were enjoying the work they were doing. And that's despite of all these dangers that they're facing. You know, if we remove the dangers, think you know, how, how much more enjoyable it would be for them. And finally, the skills that they were learning in work are the sorts of skills that we're trying to get university students to learn. Um, that if you want to go into some sort of enterprise, the sorts of skills that you'd be trying to learn. They're learning the everyday practical skills of, of work, of enterprise. So actually, at the end of it, it really does make us question our assumptions about child labour. And it makes us think, actually, there's, there's a lot of good comes out of it. If only we could remove some of these problems. So if we take all those findings, if we take that, um, the fact that our assumptions about child labour might be wrong, that children enjoy themselves, that they learn important skills, and that the real problem is the way in which they're managed, that we're trying to remove them from the streets and not protect them and enable them. It tells us our international policies are wrong. It says we need to, to relook at the Convention on the Rights of the Child. We need to look at those policies and look at ways of promoting children's work so that we can see those skills emerge. Um, and in a local scale, we need to find ways of protecting children. But whilst we make it illegal, you can't have a, a police force that's there to protect those street children. Yeah. So that's the local challenges. How do we accommodate those children, find spaces for them to work and protect them when they're there?